Anyway, the question is, are we going to go to Haiti even if we can't raise the 75 grand? The answer is yes. Uh, we're going on a recon. We've already got money to take two people down there for a recon. The recon may just mean talking to people down there. And I'm, I'm sure we will raise the money to get down there in one way or another, but we already have the money to take two people down there and have some kind of an impact. Uh, ben asks, any words of wisdom for approaching building authorities with, with uh, uh, ownership build? Uh, well, we've, we've the first part of this conversation, uh, the question is any words of wisdom for approaching a building authority with an airship. Uh, the, we did cover quite a bit of that in the beginning of this conversation, but first of all, don't go to them and say, um, don't even go say, I'm a, don't go out and tell them I'm building an airship. Don't go say, I've had people go to the building authority and say, I'm building a rubber tire house with sewage running through the living room and solar systems. You're going to scare the hell out of them. Just Feel them out for alternative methods involving thermal mass and rammed earth. Solar electricity is not rocket science. Stay kind of quiet about harvesting water uh, because a lot of places are squirrely on that. And stay completely quiet about the contained sewage system because inherently in our sewage system is a conventional system and it shows on the drawing. So every airship built has a conventional sales, uh, system uh, built in it. You just don't use very much of it. You use the septic tank as part of the airship system. So you have to present this to them in a way that doesn't ask them to take risks. Yes, that there is. there are words of wisdom for how to approach them and generally they are don't hit them with everything. Just stay very conservative with your conversations to feel them out and you can make it through a lot of building authorities. Okay, let's let's do some really short answers. We got about five minutes left and these are a few more short answer questions. Thanks everybody for participating in this. It uh, looks like this is going to be a good thing. Okay, can you tell us more about homemade windmills and how much power it generates? <coughs> Question on homemade windmills, how much power do they generate? The question on windmills, we played with homemade windmills and we played with manufactured, played with manufactured windmills. And what you, what my bottom line there is, uh, the homemade vertical axis windmills, people stayed away from them after a while because they weren't as efficient as the new, as the propeller types. Well, the propeller types have much higher maintenance and they break more often. As a matter of fact, I've only got, out of about five, I've only, I've only got one left working. I've given up on all the rest of them. They've been fixed too many times. But, at the same time, I've got a vertical axis windmill that's spun for 25 years, 25 years with no maintenance. It finally, the blades blew apart. So what I'm saying is I will trade less efficiency for no maintenance. And so I'm going with, we are making our own uh, super, uh, we call it Dynasphere model uh, windmill. It'll be up and running in a couple of months and it will be a no maintenance vertical axis windmill that will make power in wind. I don't care how efficient it is or isn't. It's gonna be no maintenance. And anytime there's a wind, it's gonna make some power. Whether it's super amount of power, I don't care, but I'm always designing airships down to need less power anyway. I, this windmill will certainly uh, uh, be a participant in the energy use of any airship. Okay, um, what are your uh, planned strategies for applying airships into urban areas? Uh, Earthships in urban areas is the question. Uh, we are, we are, have many conversations going right now with Earthships in urban areas. They can work easily. Uh, we're doing retrofits. We're attaching Earthships onto existing buildings. There's a lot of ways to go about it. Earthships in urban areas are a must. Uh, right now there's way more of them in, uh, in, in uh, rural areas, of course. <laughs> Do you have plans for setting up a satellite, satellite businesses around the world like your own, or do you expect people to start up their own Earthship businesses? What are the intellectual uh, property rights for the Earthship brand? Well, this is, this is a question regarding intellectual property rights for the Earthship brand and satellite businesses around the world. Uh, we're not, uh, uh, we, we definitely want branches all over the world. We definitely are not big business. We are not a corporation. Uh, we're an LLC, but we're not. Business is my, not my calling, Earthships are. So I'm not a great business person to set up satellite businesses all over the world. But uh, as far as intellectual rights, we want this to be used. Uh, what we request of people that gather information and try to do it in their area with, with us, then, then uh, let us guide you. Uh, if you try to do it without us, please don't call it an Earthship because if you do it and mess it up, which a lot of people have, it destroys, 
you know, decades of work with the Earthship name. So we struggle to keep people from calling them Earthships if they aren't actually endorsed and uh, supervised by us. But by all means, we want the, what we've learned in 40 years to be used by as many people as possible because it can have an impact on the planet. What's your opinion about tire bales? Uh, last question. I, I will take one more after this. Okay. The question um, is, what's my opinion of tire bales? I've never even looked at them twice because they are huge and they require machinery to move, whereas a tire you can handle, one person can handle it. And rubber is not necessarily thermal mass. It's uh, more uh, porous uh, than, than, uh, it, than, than compacted earth, especially the bales. And you know, they, they could probably be done. If I had nothing else but a bunch of tire bales and a big piece of equipment to move them, I'd certainly use them. But I'm, you know, tires themselves are indigenous to the entire planet. It's just such a natural and easy thing to do. Uh, I don't have much, I have no experience and not much to say about tire bales. One more question. Okay, do cisterns um, in areas with, with deep frost layers, is there, a, um, is there jeopardy of them freezing? They are outside the thermal wrap. Uh, when we have cisterns, the question is, do cisterns freeze in super cold areas? We insulate them. Uh, we bury them and insulate them. They have to be dark so that algae won't grow. And if there's a question of them freezing, we put insulation on the top. If there's a serious question of them freezing, we just include them in the thermal wrap. So it's not a big deal. So that's it for questions. Uh, thanks for the questions. The questions cause information to get spewed out there. Uh, this is a, a very good thing webinar because it allows us to talk with people all around the world. Thanks for participating in this, everybody. It is always a pleasure to talk about our ships. Bye.